Thank you, Mr. Chair. I seek unanimous consent to insert in the record letters from the Export-Import Bank dated April 16th and April 24th to this combined subcommittees to remove any mystery about receipt of these. The committee has received them. With your permission, sir. Uh, without objection, so moved. Secondly, uh, my friend Mr. Mulvaney made reference to a dated comment by the Boeing Company about the impact of the elimination of XM. I don't know what the date was on that, but let me give you one from the last several days from Reuters. Boeing Company may have to relocate U.S.-based engineering and manufacturing jobs overseas if Congress eliminates funding for the U.S. Export-Import Bank, Chief Executive Jim McNerney said on Thursday, quote, most of my engineering and manufacturing jobs are in the United States, and I'd like to keep it that way. But without XM, you'd have to start asking the question about where they should be, end quote. I have said before, and I say in the most serious and somber of possible terms and tones, we are playing with fire. We are playing with fire with the heart of the manufacturing base in America if we continue down this path. My friend from South Carolina, whom I am very sorry left, asked a pretty spectacular question earlier, namely in the three years since the XM was reauthorized, what happened to cause it to go on life support, what happened to cause it to go from 330 votes in favor of to life support? Uh, the problem with that, of course, as the chair of the Export-Import Bank began to outline, is that it is not on, exp it's not on life support. It does, in fact, have 250 co-sponsors of two bills. And my friend, I think Ms. Moore, referred to 189. That is wrong. It is 190. <laughs> uh, and there are 60 from the other side of the aisle for Mr. Fincher's version. The problem here isn't that it is on life support. The problem is that it hasn't been subjected to a vote. There is not a person sitting in this room who would dispute the fact that the votes are there to reauthorize the Export-Import Bank if it will but come to a vote. But it is a fair question. What has happened since that reauthorization? That chair hasn't changed. That chair has. Mr. Backus, who chaired this committee when it was reauthorized, let it through regular order. Last year, when it was reauthorized for a short period of time, it was outside of regular order. Earlier in this term, this winter, we had an amendment to the Committee Oversight Bill, very innocuous, very neutrally worded, suggesting that consideration of reauthorization of the Export-Import Bank ought to be subjected to regular order. And the new chair, the factor that has changed, opposed it, and it was defeated. Now, if I were a cynic, I would say that is because he is afraid. He knows the votes are here. He darn well knows the votes are here. That is why he won't bring it to regular order. Mr. Gowdy asked another interesting question of Mr. Hochberg, not a terribly fair one, but an interesting one. Did he think that facts would persuade the chair of the committee? Well, the truth is they don't. And the truth is equally, I don't even blame the chair for that. This is a matter of philosophy and values. And the chair of the committee, who is opposed to regular order, who has publicly announced he is opposed to reauthorization of the Export-Import Bank, will not have his mind changed by facts because it is a matter of philosophy. And he is 100 percent entitled to that philosophy. But it does not represent the majority point of view of the United States House of Representatives by any stretch of the imagination any stretch of the imagination. If that were true, then he would bring Mr. Fincher's bill to markup. But he hasn't, and he hasn't scheduled it. And I think it is highly unlikely he won't schedule it, because, again, he knows the votes are there. 190 Democrats on Ms. Waters' version of the bill, Ms. Moore's and mine. 60 on Mr. Fincher's. The votes are there to reauthorize the Export-Import Bank. He has his foot on the air hose as a matter of philosophy. He doesn't believe in the XM. He is entitled to that point of view. I don't believe he is entitled to keep the will of this body from manifesting in consideration of this institution, this 80-year-old institution that creates 
jobs for Americans. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman's time.